Let's consider this problem. We want to look at two samples are taken from a given uh, numbers of successes and the sample sizes. So what we'll be able to calculate here is the proportion in these uh, two samples. So we're looking for the confidence interval of the difference of proportions in these two populations. So that's the first thing that we need to identify here is the type of problem that we've got. So let's draw a three, di a three distribution uh, diagram of the problem that we're facing. We're looking at two populations. The first population has a, uh, a yes no question involved. Maybe we're talking about people who have cancer. So the people either have cancer or they do not. So uh, we want to know the proportion of people in this population who have cancer. We'll call that P1, the proportion that have cancer. The number of yeses divided by the total number in the population. We don't know that. And there's a second population that we're asking a similar question about. Do, in this population, uh, what's the proportion of people that, that answer yes to the particular question? Since we can't look at the entire population, we look at a sample in each case. From the first population, we take a sample of, si of size N1, and we notice how many successes there are in that sample, how many people are answering yes. We'll be able to calculate a proportion of that sample from that information. Similarly, we take a sample from the second population. It's of size N2, and we count the number of successes that are there. We're going to look at the distribution of all such samples that we take if we calculated the proportion of the first population minus the proportion of the second population. Of course, we only get to look at one of the many possibilities that there are for a for calculating this statistic. But the thing that we know is that if we looked at all possible uh, samples, that this distribution would be normally distributed so that the mean of this distribution is, is uh, P1, the, the true population of the first, the, the true proportion of the first population minus P2 the true proportion of the second population. So we know that this would be normally distributed with that mean and with the standard deviation of this, that's called the standard error, of, uh, of the square root of P1 hat times Q1 hat uh, divided by N1 plus P2 hat times Q2 hat divided by N2. So this, the the standard deviation of this normal distribution is going to be given by this. Now notice that uh, Professor Kosak uses uh, the, this assuming that uh, w whenever she's doing a, a proportion, a uh, confidence interval for proportions, she assumes that the, uh, that the standard deviations of these two populations are going to be different and uses uh, this for the standard deviation. Now when she does a a hypothesis test, then she uses uh, pooled uh, data instead. Okay, so now we've got, uh, got that set up. So now we'll look at a standard normal distribution. The mean of this is going to be uh, zero and its standard deviation is going to be one. So the, this, these z values are going to tell us how many standard deviations we need to be away uh, from the mean. So what we want to do is build this confidence uh, level. Let me pull the, uh, that confidence level is 93%. Let me pull this up so that we're seeing a picture. So we want to build that, uh, remember it's 93%. We want to build that 93% conf that confidence level down into Z standard devi deviation. So we want 93% of the population to be centered here on the mean. That means the part that's outside of that will be 1 minus this amount. We're going to call that alpha. 
and that alpha is divided into two parts. So this part right up here, just kind of color that in. That colored in area is alpha divided by two. What we want to find is this Z value right here. It would make it so that there'd be the, the number of standard deviations we need to be away from the mean so that 93% of the, of the distribution is centered about, uh, about the mean. Many textbooks call that number Z alpha divided Z sub alpha divided by two. Okay, so let's write a script that will take advantage of this information and, uh, and calculate the standard, the uh, confidence interval for us. I'm going to use our studio for my calculations here. I like to put in the data, the, the beginning data in the same order that it shows in the problem. It's easier for me to go back and check if I make a mistake. So in the first sample, we had 36 successes. The size of that sample was 99. The second sample had 40 successes and the sample size was 82. The other given piece of information is that uh, the confidence level needed to be 93%. Um, From here I need to walk through the ideas associated with the three distribution diagram. So the proportion from the first sample, p hat 1, is going to be r1 divided by n1. From the second proportion, the, from the second sample, we took a, a sample, and the sample proportion there is r2 minus n2. r2 divided by n2, I'm sorry. I'm often going to be interested in the difference between these two. It will be convenient for me so I don't have to type such a long line. I'll I'll build something that I'll call p hat d for the difference in the in the two and we'll just call that p hat one minus p hat two. Now we know that the standard error or in other words the standard deviation of the distribution of this sample statistic is going to be given by this formula. So I'm going to need to know what q1 and q2 are to be able to calculate that formula. And of course, q hat 1 is just 1 minus p hat 1, and q hat 2 is just uh, 1 minus p hat 2. So now I'm ready to calculate that standard error. So there it is. There's the standard error, and there we are putting that particular calculation into R. So R will now know what that value is. Okay, now let's turn our, turn our attention down here. Alpha is just going to be 1 minus the confidence level. We need to know what alpha divided by 2 is, and that's just going to, we'll call that A, uh, is, is going to be that area that's right up here. Okay, so to find this Z alpha divided by 2, remember that R uh, looks, always considers the area below something. So we need to describe not alpha divided by 2, but everything else to be able to find that. And we're looking for a quantile, so we'll be using the Q norm. So we'll be able to find that Z alpha divided by 2 as follows. We're looking for a quantile, so we use the Q norm. And alpha and A is alpha divided by 2. So 1 minus alpha divided by 2 is the area below that Z value. So the, the Z alpha divided by 2 that we're looking for, Z, is going to be found by Q norm is equal to 1 minus A. So that tells us how many standard deviations we need to be away from the mean so that we've got 93% of the population centered at the mean. So therefore we can find our margin of error as follows. 
margin of error will simply be z, the number of standard deviations we need to be away, times the standard error, which is this uh, standard deviation up here. So, so that's going to be our, our margin of error. And then we can find our lower bound by looking at that p hat d, the difference between the two, minus me. That'll be our lower bound. And p hat d plus me, oops, plus me will be our upper bound. Okay. So let's, uh, let's run that script. And... Now, when I ran the script, I got an error. So we needed to diagnose where that error is. And notice what happened. R1, N1, R2. This should have been an N2. Okay. So now let's run the script. And sure enough, there we get our lower bound and our upper bound uh, for this. You see, we took the p hat minus that margin of error. Our margin of error is going to, let me get it up here where you can see it. Our, our margin of error is going to be z times the standard, standard error. So p hat d, the difference of those two, minus the margin of error is going to be a lower bound. And p hat d plus the margin of error is going to be the upper bound. So there's our, our two inputs. So now it's going to be easy enough to copy these these bounds. There's our lower bound. Copy that and paste it in here. Copy the upper bound right there. Copy it and paste it into up here. Now they said that they wanted to round this to the nearest thousandth, so this probably should be a minus 0 0.257 to the nearest thousandth, and this should be a 0 0.009 rounded to the nearest. Sometimes we can get away without rounding it, and it's happy with that result. Now look at the second problem. It's uh, very, very much the same. We're looking at a confidence interval. They're asking us, please notice that they're asking us to to write this, not in interval notation, but with the, the difference of the two uh, proportions here and the margin of error here. So let's just modify our script to be able to handle that information. So now we can just go through and, oh, this is, shoot, this is not the difference of two proportions. It's the difference of two means. Hang on, we'll have to do that in another video.